Russia is running out of precision-guided missiles. But here's the thing, while many view this as a good thing, in reality, this could be bad news for Ukraine and could cause more terror and suffering for the Ukrainian people. Moreover, some American military analysts believe that Russia running low on missiles may force them into escalation. You see, this whole headline of Russia running out of missiles is in fact a much more complicated topic than you would think which requires serious debunking to understand what's actually happening. According to Russia, they have sufficient stockpiles of precision-guided weapons and their factories are pumping them out non-stop. With that said, Russia never disclosed how many missiles they've used and how many remain. So, is Russia running out of missiles? And if so, which ones? And why is this a bad thing for Ukraine? But hold on a minute, dude. This is bullshit American propaganda. How on earth is Russia running out of missiles if just recently they had a massive missile attack that destroyed 30% of the Ukrainian electrical infrastructure? Yes, on October 10th, 2022, Russia launched a massive attack on Ukrainian infrastructure which consisted of 84 missiles and 24 Iranian-made Shahed Loitering munition drones. President Putin called this attack retaliation for the attack on the Crimean bridge that happened on October 8th. But according to Ukrainian and Western intelligence, the preparations for this massive attack began on October 2nd, before the Crimean bridge was hit. Ukraine reported that they shot down at least 43 missiles out of the 83, while Russia claimed that they fired 70 missiles with every single one hitting its target. As a result of the attack, Ukrainians experienced prolonged blackouts as their energy facilities and other infrastructure facilities were hit. At least one missile ended up hitting a children's playground and an intersection in Kyiv. It is unclear whether those missiles landed there after being shot down or not. Forbes estimated that the attack cost Russia somewhere between 400 and 700 million dollars. Following the missile attack, British Defense Intelligence issued a statement that these attacks represent a further degradation of Russia's long-range missile stocks, which is likely to constrain their ability to strike the volume of targets they desire in the future. And they are right, because missile attacks, just like the last one, are quite rare. In fact, the last missile attack of a similar size happened months ago on June 25th to 26th, as Russia expended as many as 80 missiles during those two days. Prior to that, Russia used that many missiles only during the first days of the invasion. The fact that missile attacks of this size are infrequent points to Russia running low on its key missiles. So let's take a look at Russia's missile arsenal. On October 12th, 2022, Ukraine issued a graphic of the approximate Russian high-precision missile arsenal remaining based on their intelligence. The ground-launched Iskander missile is arguably the best missile in Russia's arsenal. This short-range ballistic missile has a range of up to 500 kilometers, travels at a hypersonic speed of Mach 6 at an elevation of about 50 kilometers above ground. The missile has a warhead capable of destroying everything in an area about two football fields and has an accuracy about the size of a building's window when launched from tens of kilometers away. Because this missile is ballistic and travels at hypersonic speed, it's incredibly difficult to intercept. It's unlikely that Ukrainians managed to intercept any of the Iskander missiles, and if they did, the number would be a handful. According to Ukrainians, Russians have fired close to 800 Iskanders since the start of the invasion with only about 14% of their original stock left. Whatever Iskander missiles remain are only going to be used for high-value targets. In contrast to the low stocks of Iskander missiles, Russia has more than half of its Kalibr missiles remaining. But there is a reason for that. Kalibr is a family of Russian cruise missiles that are primarily launched from the sea, either from warships or submarines. Depending on the model, Kalibr has a range of 600 to 2500 kilometers. But for most of the flight, Kalibr missiles travel at subsonic speeds of about Mach 0.8, which makes it much easier to intercept. For this reason, 
Caliber missiles are often launched in salvos. Ukrainians claim that they intercept anywhere between 50% to 100% of the Kalib cruise missiles depending on the launch platform. If launched from a warship, it's much easier to intercept the missile because you know the launch location. After all, it's much easier to track a warship than a submarine. In contrast, if launched from a submarine submerged 50 meters, the starting location of the missile may not be known early enough or at all thus making it much harder to intercept. Finally, according to Ukrainians, Russia still has about half of its air-launched cruise missiles. Missiles such as X-101 and X-555 are launched from either Tu-160 Blackjack or Tu-95 Bear. These missiles have a range of up to 3,000 kilometers and travel at subsonic speeds of about Mach 0.75. Similar to the Kalib cruise missiles, these ones are also easy to intercept. All in all, according to Ukrainians, Russia has just over 600 precision-guided missiles left, but only 20% of those, the Iskander missiles, are the biggest threat. The rest can be easily intercepted. According to Alexei Arostovich, current Ukrainian air defenses, which consist mostly of S-300 surface-to-air missile systems, are capable of intercepting over 70% of missiles when they're launched in small amounts, but the intercept percentage drops to 50% during mass attacks. It is believed that once Ukrainians receive sufficient quantities of IRIS-T and NASEM's air defense systems, they will be able to intercept over 90% of cruise missiles and even intercept Iskandar ballistic missiles. But is there any other proof that Russians are running out of their precision-guided missiles besides the tweets from Ukrainian officials? Yes, the fact that Russians began to use some incredibly old Soviet missiles and that they acquired weapons from Iran. The biggest sign of Russia running out of the precision-guided missiles is the fact that they have resorted to using older S-300 surface-to-air missile systems to strike ground targets. That's because they have up to 10,000 of these missiles in their arsenal, so no rationing is required. The thing is, the S-300 missiles are designed to intercept air targets, so they don't have the sufficient punch to destroy hardened military targets but they can destroy civilian buildings, which they do, almost every day in Zaporizhia. Although when they used in ground attack mode, S-300 missiles are very inaccurate because they can't hit the target they want to hit. It's basically firing the missile and seeing where it ends up. The fact that they're using S-300 missiles is a clear sign that Russia is running low on their more advanced missiles. Besides S-300s, Russians have also used older air-launched X-22 missiles that were produced back in 1962. Leave us a comment if you were alive in 1962. The X-22 is incredibly inaccurate, to the extent that they can land in a 600-meter radius from their intended target only 50% of the time. For example, on June 27, 2022, two X-22 missiles were used in an attack on Kremenchuk. One missile landed on a shopping mall which killed 21 people and injured 59. The second missile landed at the edge of a concrete factory, injuring two people. Finally, Russians are starting to rely more on Iranian drones rather than their own missiles. Hundreds of Iranian drones have been delivered to Russia to be used against Ukraine. If anything, it's a sign of weakness for the Russian military-industrial complex. The most widely used Iranian drone, the Shahed-136, is a low-cost loitering munition drone which became known as the Kamikaze drone because it can be programmed to hit a specific GPS location. They fly quite low and have a range of over a thousand kilometers. Ukrainians call them Mapied because they're super loud like a moped. The weakness of the Iranian drones is that they can only strike stationary targets Thus, they're not a big threat to mobile forces on the battlefield. For example, on October 17, 2022, Russia launched 62 Iranian drones, from which 36 were intercepted. The thing is, intercepting those drones use a lot of surface-to-air rockets, and Ukraine only has so many. Since it's believed that Russia has up to 2,400 Iranian-made drones, 
they can terrorize Ukraine for months to come. Besides the drones, Russia is also acquiring several hundred Fateh-110 and Zulfagar missiles, most of which are yet to be built. It is interesting how Russia, being one of the largest arm producers in the world, has to rely on Iranian drones and missiles. It could be that Iran has more experience living under sanctions and knows how to bypass them in order to get whatever Western components they need for their weapons. You see, Russia can't simply mass-produce their most advanced missiles since all of the electronics needed are basically Western-made. In an in-depth report, Reuters examined downed Russian Iskandar and Kalib missiles. It turns out that most, if not all, of the chips inside those missiles are made by Altera, Texas Instruments, Intel, and AMD, all of which are American. Because of sanctions, Russia cannot simply order those chips directly anymore, although they can order a thousand microwaves and harvest those exact same chips out of them. Anyway, you get the point, which is why Russia can only produce three X-101 missiles per month. Simply put, Russian manufacturers can't make what the Russian Defense Ministry wants. They have to shop outside the country, from Iran. Now the question is, how were the Russians able to convince Iran to send them so many drones so quickly? What did Iran ask for in return? I don't know, but I do think that Israel would not be fond of it. Before we conclude, we've got to talk about missile accuracy. Prior to this war, Russian missiles such as X-101, Iskandar and Kalibr were marketed as high-precision missiles with a margin of error of just a few meters. But even in 2017, it was pointed out that Kalibr had an accuracy of 30 meters and X-101 had an accuracy of 5 to 50 meters. But an accuracy of 30 to 50 meters is not considered precision-guided. Hitting a shoebox-sized target is, like a HIMARS can do. In addition, Armenia, who had acquired Iskandar E missiles from Russia, reported that during testing, missiles were only able to successfully hit the target 10% of the time. But that claim was later retracted, probably because Armenia didn't want to piss off Russia, who was their main supplier of weapons. From the very beginning of the Russian invasion, the Pentagon pinpointed that Russia was experiencing a significant amount of missile failures. On March 25, 2022, the Pentagon stated that the Russian missile failure rate is 20 to 60 percent on any given day. The air-launched cruise missiles had the lowest kill rate. The missile failures were described as failure to launch, failure to hit the target, or failure to detonate upon hitting the target. One thing is for sure, the large missile expenditure that Russia is experiencing was not planned as they expected a quick victory in Ukraine. The fact that they're running out of precision-guided missiles means that Russia will have to resort to using more and more of their inaccurate missiles, such as S-3100 and X-22. And that could benefit Russia, because using inaccurate missiles in Ukraine can drive up the levels of panic, pushing Kyiv toward peace talks, which Russia so badly wants, so they can rebuild their army prior to resuming their invasion again. Russia's efforts to replace their arsenal of missiles will be difficult due to cost, production limitations, and the impact of sanctions. And worse, there are significant problems with the performance of Russian cruise missiles. They're nowhere near as accurate as that of their Western counterparts. But they were never supposed to be. That's because the Russian Iskandar, Kalib, and X-101 missiles were designed for dual use, meaning they can carry both conventional and nuclear warheads. Of course, with nuclear-armed missiles, accuracy is less of a concern, since even a small tactical warhead is enormously more powerful than a large conventional warhead. Some American military analysts, in fact, worry that Russia's experience with lack of accuracy and high failure rate of their conventional missiles could push Moscow toward the wrong conclusion. Instead of improving accuracy on conventional missiles, Russia may choose the easier option of arming their missiles with small nuclear warheads, which are not prone to accuracy problems. And that would be a big problem.